Next topic in the unit 1 is uh, logical design of IoT. Logical design of IoT consists of two subtopics functional block of IoT, IoT communication models and then next we will see IoT communication APIs. Uh, communication APIs are of two types REST based API, WebSocket API. First we will start with logical design of IoT. So, logical design of IoT, first topic under that is IoT functional blocks. So, you are having different different functional blocks provided by IoT system. So, this logical design basically rep uh, represents abstract representation of processes and entities where we do not have low level specification. We have only just abstract uh, description of IoT systems or IoT entities. So, these functional blocks are divided into device, communication, services, management, security and applications. These are all different functional blocks in logical design of IoT. We will see one one functional block in detail. So, first type of functional block is devices. Devices here means hardware devices that is it can be sensors or it can be actuators which are connected in IoT system. So, all these uh, IoT systems which are connected can provide sensing, actuation, management and control. Next is communication. Communication is the basic functional block. It is an important functional block in the logical design of IoT. We require communication between IoT devices in one system. One IoT device is communicated to another IoT device within an IoT system. This we are doing because to exchange the data between one IoT device to another IoT device. That is why it is an important functional block in logical design of IoT. Next is services, the different types of services provided by, by the IoT system like uh, survey data control or data integrity or device uh, discovery, these are the different types of services provided here. Like this, if you want to control the data, that means what is the status of the data, whether the device is in working position or whether it is in not working position to check the status to control the data, the different types of services provided by IoT system. Next is management. Management is a type of a functional block which is going to check whether overall system is working accordingly or not, whether it is working according to the functionality or not. Overall system checking and managing the overall system is the functionality of management functional block. Next is security. When we are talking about IoT, sen uh, sensors are being connected in IoT system. Every sensor is sending data to another sensor through internet. That means every data is available on the internet. Once the data is available on the internet, there can be many different types of threats like virus or hackers or data. Data can be lost like many types of threats can be there. That is why security is provided between one uh, data which is been flowing through the internet like authorization mechanism uh, and the content integrity and data security is provided in IoT devices. Next application, application is the top layer in the uh, functional blocks logical design of IoT where user can interact with the application block. That means user is the final one who is using the system whatever you are preparing. So, we will see whether the user is able to use the system correctly with the minimum functionalities or with minimum procedures. So, these are all different functional blocks in logical design of IoT. Second topic under logical design of IoT is IoT communication models. Uh, just now we have told communication is one of the important block in logical design of IoT. So, how the one device is talking to another device, one system, one device is interacting to another device that will know by knowing the different types of communicational model. So, under communication model, first type of model is request response communication model. So, this is the block diagram of request response communication model. Here, the uh, you are having three different parties, client, server and resources. These are the three different parties in request response communication protocol. Now, how this communication model works is client uh, is requesting some 
request to the server. Now, when the client is requesting to the server, server will see what is the request which is being asked by the client and it will go check in the resources. From the resources, it will fetch the, the data and after fetching the data, it will give the response to the client. So, client is asking for some request and server is giving response to the client. For example, you can take Google search engine. As a client, we can ask anything in the URL, whatever you want to type or whatever you want to ask, you are typing in the URL. Now, Google search engine will search in the server what is the data related to which the client is asking and it fetches the data and it will display on the page. This is the example for request response protocol and another thing here is it is stateless protocol why we are calling a stateless is whenever we are asking request to the server every request that is asked from client to server is independent it is working independently that means there there is no storage of our history the what are the request from the client to server that history is not been stored every request and response is an independent one that's why we call it as stateless we are having only one connection at a time. After, after this completed, then again if you want to ask something as a client, then again a one more request and response is being created. So, every request and response is independent to each other. That is why we call it as stateless communication model. And next type of communication model is public subscribe model. So, this is the block diagram for public subscribe model. The main parties in this public subscribe model is publisher, bro broker and then subscriber or we can call it as consumer. So, these publishers are data generators, data producers, data creators. The broker is the one who is going to manage the data. And the consumer are the one who are going to use the data. How it works is publisher will send messages in form of topics and all topics are grouped together. Similar topics are grouped together by broker and from one topic who is the related customer who is asking for that topic the broker will send to the subscriber or consumer. So, this is the way how public subscriber will work. Example, if you take, you can take social media. So, social media, we can search any type of like you can search about sports or you can search about science and technology or you can search about fashion like this different types of messages uh, can be asked by the publisher. Now, broker will collect all the data like you can, you like any of the video, you subscribe the video or you follow any of the profiles or you like, uh, like any video or like any page. So, everything who is subscribing about one particular topic, all the topics are divided by the broker. So, broker is the main one in this public subscriber communication model. He is the one who knows what is the publisher is subscribing for what is the publisher has subscribed for particular channel or for particular page or is following some profile so broker knows it 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 will categorize all the subscribers and it will send to the related sub, uh, subscribers and the consumers the data from the broker is sent to related subscribers next type of communication model is push pull model so in this push pull the parties which are used in this communication model are publisher, queues and consumer or you can also call consumer as subscriber. So, how this communication model uh, will work is publisher is sending the data. So, whenever the publisher is sending the data about anything like we have said like any sports related or fashion related anything on the internet, on the social media, any person can type any related data. So, whatever the um, publisher is asking for, everything is kept in a queue. Everything you uh, kept in a queue. You can think as if you are having a page of your own social page where you are searching different different types of domains of data and if you are searching for sports, the related sports will appear. The list of all the sports will appear in your timeline or in your feed. Then you are going to scroll up, continuously scroll up and check all the videos and you will select the one video which you are wanting or which you are searching for. So, all the uh, search, all 
all the searches or all the messages sent by publisher are placed in the queue. From the queue here, uh, uh, it is not mechanical like pushing or pulling, just whatever you are searching is, is stacked here. From that you are selecting what is the related one that you are selecting from the queue. This is called as push-pull communication model. The last communication model is exclusive pair model. Here the parties are client and server. Now how this exclusive pair works is it is same as request response protocol with some differences. What is same here is client is asking for some request and the server is responding to the client. This is same as request response protocol. But the thing here is it is state stateful communication. Stateful communication means once you are set up a request or communication from client to server, whatever the setup you want or the connection you want, you are requesting. As a client, you are requesting a connection to the server. Server will accept that request. There, then only you can ask for the messages. You can extract whatever you want from the server after establishing connection. Then you can uh, message the client to server, server to client. This can be done many number of times. But uh, but while setting the uh, uh, connection only, and after completing everything, your uh, client is going to ask for the closing request connection. Server will respond or acknowledge close response. So that means here uh, it is called as stateful. Why? Because it is storing all the history, all the searches as a client we are asking from the server. That means again, if you want, you can check the history. What is the type of the data on this particular domain which I have already searched? Using that, you can see uh, what is the thing that you want to search again. So, but this will happen only when the connection is established and after completing everything, you should compulsory close the connection. You should request for closing request and you will get the response from the server. Like this connection creation and connection closing should compulsory be done. Once it is uh, connection is established, you can do bidirectional message passing, full duplex bidirectional message communication can be done from client to server and finally you are closing the connection. That is why we call it as stateful communication model. This is the only difference between the request response and exclusive pair communication protocol. Next topic is IoT communication APIs. So, uh, in this you are having two different types, REST based communication API and WebSocket communication API. What is REST based communication API is, this is the block diagram for REST based communication API. Here you are having a client, a server, in between this client and server you are having a packet and then resources. Now how it will work is, HTTP client is asking some request. We are using an application protocol called as HTTP. That is why we are calling it as HTTP client. Client is asking for some request and server need to fetch the data and uh, get the information to the client. So, in between this client and server, you are having a HTTP packet. What are the data, what are the information as a client I am asking to the server, that data will be formed in a, in a form of packet where packet is consisting of HTTP command and uh, REST payload. Here on the data, you can apply any of the HTTP commands like get, put, post, delete. These are all the commands that you can apply on the data. And finally, you can get REST payload in a form of J JSON file or XML file. And after this, it, it is going to the server. After the HTTP packet is going to the server which is asked by the client. Now, first thing the HTTP server will do is authentication. It will check for the authorization whether the correct client, we have got the request from the correct client or not, authorized client or not. And after that, the server is consisting of many different web services in the server. It will check if this HTTP packet requires any of the web services which are there in the server. If it is required, it will check for the third party resources. Otherwise, it will use the web services which are already available in the service and then respond to the client. This is the REST based communication API. 
this is what told you client server separation of client server architecture which ensures client focuses on user interface while server handles all the data storage enabling independent deployment and update for each component independent that's why we can say it is using rest response communication protocol that's why it is called as rest based communication api Stay stateless that means no history of the communication will be stored every every single connection is uh, independent of each other and there can be different types of responses like ca catchable responses non catchable responses catchable means allowing reuse of data for similar request in the same way layered system here intermediaries can respond to request instead of end server enhancing the system scalability that means you can ask for the third party to uh, from the resources to get the data and uniform interface uniform interface enables consistent communication between client and server code on demand server can provide exe executable code script for client to execute their content this is about uh, rest based communication api and next one is websocket based communication api so this uses exclusive pair communication model why we are telling uh, com exclusive pair communication model here is we are having client and server and now client is asking for some request before asking for request he should ask connection setup when the server acknowledges or accepts the request then we call it as a handshake initial handshake that means handshake is been created from the client to server after creating the handshake you can send multiple data bidirectional data so bidirectional here arrow represents bidirectional communication parallelly client can ask server can respond this can go uh, in a loop wise after completing anything uh, uh, every data whatever you are requesting for connection close request you should ask as a client to the server and if server gives the response for the closing the connection so this is called as closing connection that's why we say it is using exclusive pair communication model but the only thing is that here for every request you should have an independent connection so this is what is been the web socket api enables bidirectional full duplex communication between client and server it starts with the client sending a http connection request recognizing the server and it will provide an handshake for smooth enabling data transformation and this type of communication api will decrease network traffic and latency by removing connection setup overhead for each message because we are not uh, storing anything here 